pray into that. That's what I said. <coughs> Just volunteer yourself. It's okay. A little uh, bumper sticker. As long as they give tests, they'll be praying at prayer in school. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, Scott. <laughs> I saw a little bumper sticker a long time ago that said, as long as they give tests, they'll be prayer in school. <laughs> I get it. Personal experience, I think. Confirm that is true. I do my part to keep prayers going. Yeah, you, you, you make a lot of people pray. Yeah. <laughs> Closer to that than you think, John. <laughs> Eric's not showing up, so. Robert Hendricks isn't here, so. Where's Eric? He's praying for you somewhere. He's <laughs> waiting for prayers to be over. <laughs> Our city attorney, Eric Cunningham, if you'd give our invocation, please. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity for us to work for this city, to live in this city, and and to have this meeting this this evening. Father, I just read in the last few days how how Solomon, when he took the charge of your people, the first thing he asked was for wisdom for you to help him to guide them, to direct them in the way they should go. And Lord, I ask you that same thing for our council this evening. I ask you to give them your direction. I ask you to give them your wisdom. Help them to know the things that, that they should do, the things that are right in your sight. Give them a wisdom, Lord, which is from you. Thank you for this meeting again. Thank you for everyone that is here. In Jesus' name, amen. Now if you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'll call to order this session of our Cape Girardeau City Council. This is our July 5th, 2016 meeting. We are halfway through the calendar year. Thank you all for being here. Um, roll call. Wayne Bowen. Here. Bob Fox. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Victor Gunn. Here. Shelley Moore. Here. Harry Rediger. Here. Joseph Azuro. Council, uh, motion to adopt the agenda, please. So moved. By gun. Second. Second by guard. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? We have no uh, presentations uh, this evening. Communications. Uh, I, number one, ask uh, Julia Thompson to come. We had uh, at our study session a room full of uh, participants, uh, staff, leaders, board members, etc. Uh, as we uh, honored and proclaimed July uh, Parks and Recreation Month. So I asked Julia to come at our regular session and, and talk a little bit about July and, and our parks and our recreation and, and what it means to all our citizens. So Julia, thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Of course, July is just a time that we celebrate Parks and Recreation, but every month, every day is Parks and Recreation in our world. And you know, I'm blessed to work for a fantastic city 
and a wonderful department that the passion is delivering parks and rec services to our citizens and our visitors and that makes my job easy which then helps uh, make your job easy that uh, you can feel confident that the quality of parks and rec services and city services as a whole is being delivered so we just celebrate uh, parks and rec month to just bring attention to that you saw all the variety of folks that uh, just a small piece of our world every single day from little kids in programs swim lessons officials golf course uh, folks that uh, are out there making sure that our golf course is taken care of um, lifeguards and it's just a, a numerous number of folks that are involved in our operation but the one thing we wanted to highlight this year and you noticed with Playmo is that a lot of times uh, people are bigger than life uh, in the life of a child and uh, we tend to look at superheroes um, and value the superhero characteristics uh, that we see on some of the movies or the thing the comics that we grew up as kids um, in a lot of the eyes of the kids that we deal with, our Parks and Rec folk are superheroes. Um, not only in the way they help a child learn a skill, have fun, uh, have parents build a memory, uh, but in the way that they do their business every single day, unfailingly, day in, day out. Um, sometimes it's 24-7. And of course, yesterday with the Great American Fourth of July, um, that's when we really are are so proud of the work that we do um, for our city. So, I uh, thank you for all of your support, and I know that um, you know that if there's ever anything that we can, as a Parks and Rec Department, do for you, that you will let us know. Just very honored to be here, and very proud of our staff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Also, while we're talking parks and rec, and the 4th of July was mentioned, uh, for the second year in a row, we had a very unusual 4th of July. Uh, last year, we were facing some flooding on the river, and we had to take fairly much of the last minute, the last few days, to uh, from the river to uh, Arena Park. Um, this year, um, <clears throat> Even though it had no rain for three weeks or more, naturally on 4th of July weekend it rained every day. And uh, we were down to the hour on how we were going to handle the, the event. And uh, Julia, to your credit and your staff, we thank you for uh, your efforts uh, in these unusual cases. I know it's pl plenty of a workload on the holiday time uh, to do it on a normal basis, but to be able to react hourly as you did and your staff did uh, yesterday uh, with extra effort and we say thank you um, and thanks to all of the, the folks obviously that contributed yeah great uh, great ceremony it might have been uh, so much better if we could have uh, shared it with several hundreds more but uh, the naturalization ceremony in the common pleas uh, courtroom was uh, was naturally a a highlight and then the uh, awarding of the Spirit of America through, uh, through the uh, uh, auspices and support of the Southeast Missourian was always, is always a great event. <coughs> and the fireworks this year <coughs> were terrific, were terrific. Uh, so we've got that one on, kind of on automatic pilot now. They were very good last year and very good this year. So I think we're, we're about where we need to be on, on that event. So again, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Buddy Davis if you would uh, uh, bring to us the uh, roll call event that's coming this week. Certainly. This Thursday, July 7th at 7 p.m., we'll have our neighborhood roll call. It's going to be at Lorimer and Bellevue this, this week. Okay. We're hoping for a good turnout. Okay. Very good. I uh, was able today to attend um, a walkthrough in downtown Cape Girardeau. Um, the Small Business Administration, they uh, <clears throat> are touring nine cities uh, along the Mississippi River, uh, started in St. Genevieve uh, yesterday, and it will end up in New Orleans. Um, along that tour uh, with a bus was the uh, director of the Small Business Administration out of Washington. It's a, it's a cabinet position, uh, Maria Contressa Sweet. We started that tour at uh, 
catapult. Um, Dr. Uh, uh, Vargas, Carlos Vargas, was uh, participated in that in the tour of catapult. Um, they were a little short on time. They were running a little uh, behind schedules, but we were able to get owners of Mississippi Mutts and uh, Indy House uh, over to catapult and uh, and explain their businesses and how they uh, they have started and thrived uh, through uh, SBA. Uh, we went, then went on to uh, Codify, and James, you're here. Uh, uh, had a good session at uh, at Codify, um, and uh, with the with the future plans there, and ended up at Minglewood Brewery. And uh, I think their group was very impressed with what they saw, and I think it was a great great contact. It was a great contact for me. I think I learned some things as it might relate to some future uh, uh, additional grants we didn't know about. I think they learned, a, I know they learned a lot more about Cape Girardeau. Um, I told, uh, I told uh, the uh, leader, or Maria uh, Contresa, that, that we could have spent all day, Marla, uh, we could have spent all day. Uh, with her rather than a, a short couple of hours. So it was a great exposure for our city and um, it, it was a really good event and I appreciate all that uh, participated in it. Uh, other reports from council. Staff will be having a 1,000 women march on July the 30th, uh, started at 11.30 a.m. and so they're looking for all the mothers and all anybody, but they're really reaching out for women to come and march with them to address that issue of murder and violence in the south, on the south side. So that's July the 30th, and I'll bring more information in for you. 11.30? 11.30. Yeah, they announced that at SNAP. I, uh, I attended SNAP meeting uh, also last, uh, last time. Some disappointing mm -hmm. uh, with attendance, uh, but encouraged. Um, um, the leaders there, and I encourage Shelley, and I encourage myself. We can't give up. Uh, low attendance, it would be easy to say they don't care enough, but we, we can't give up. So um, we'll still continue. We had good attendance the month before, up to words of about 40. Um, so we will continue to work on uh, on uh, that, and and uh, hopefully that will. Uh, generate more into uh, a more active uh, south uh, neighborhood uh, group. Mm -hmm. Got other neighborhood groups that are uh, active, the Red Star and uh, another neighborhood on the near north side that uh, looks like it may be self-starting. So we want to we want to continue to uh, exploit those groups. So we'll be back the next month and then we'll uh, make note of the 30th. Yes, at the Salvation Army, yeah. yeah. It's always at 5.30. Fourth, fourth, 5.30. Fourth Tuesday? Fourth Tuesday. Fourth Tuesday. Anyone else? The, the, the one at the 30th is at 11.30. That's going to be at Salvation Army. Well, that's Army. going to start on William, on, on William and Spree. William and Spree. And then it'll go to Boulevard and then from Boulevard to, like, that's the area. Then back to Randy Park. But you start, meet at William and Spree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Anyone else? Council? Staff? Well, a lot of the uh, construction going on with uh, all this heat. We have uh, um, the uh, Hopper Road project uh, moving along. We have the indoor sports complex, the uh, um, Independence of Silver Springs, and the Gordon, uh, Gordon Road roundabout uh, starting to move the utilities. And then uh, police and fire should be starting soon. And then uh, not only our project, but when we watch the convention center is uh, is uh, going up. The first floor is uh, is got the structure there, and they'll be moving right right along. So <coughs> a lot of construction progress in our city. Okay. Next order of business is um, to receive from the public any input on any item that is on the agenda this evening. 
is on the agenda. James. Good evening, uh, Council, and uh, I'm James Stapleton. Tonight, um, I'm representing the Marquette Tech District Foundation as its executive director. Uh, also in attendance tonight is Jeff Maurer. Jeff is the chairperson of our five-member uh, board of directors. We appreciate your consideration of the consent uh, item that's on this evening related to the fiber optic and public Wi-Fi project for downtown. Um, we're, we're advocates that the city uh, always negotiate favorable agreements anytime that it's considering sharing public resources. And in the case of our project, um, we're pleased to be able to provide fiber optic, uh, much needed fiber optic cable where the city is uh, needing it in exchange for the use of a small amount of fiber where the city has it. Um, we're also aware that you understand that we're our foundation is making considerable investments in additional fiber optic cable that will be installed along Main Street, along Spanish Street, and the considerable investment in the, the uh, electronics and other infrastructure required to be able to support uh, downtown businesses, um, small businesses that uh, we know we're going to continue to create jobs for uh, the community. So we appreciate your consideration of the item, and, and uh, Jeff or I would be happy to take uh, any questions you might have. Questions? So, uh, I guess the question is uh, a structural one. Um, why is, are you coming to us as a, as a foundation, a uh, nonprofit, not for profit, when we've had obviously previous engagement uh, with the TIF and the cooperation of the city with, uh, with, on the corporate side? Yeah, so um, honestly, there are sort of the project in that way is, is somewhat separate. There are private entities, for-profit entities, that are obviously invested and engaged in the development of the properties. Um, those entities don't have the capacity, nor under traditional commercial terms, uh, would they be interested in providing um, this kind of support and service to the community. So the foundation was really formed to be able to kind of be a blanket for the public good organization that we feel like we could extend aspects of what we're doing uh, privately in many cases um, to the public. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, Councilman Bowen, we're actually, the easiest thing for us to do privately just as a part of the development project would be to use the fiber optic cable that's already in the buildings that um, those investment groups have acquired and not really be interested in the uh, considerable hundreds of thousands of dollars will invest in this sort of public aspect of the project. So um, this is one of several projects we have planned that certainly don't fit within a uh, sort of commercial for-profit uh, entity that, that we're excited about being able to do through the group that's put together this foundation. Okay, other questions? Grant, or there, I guess there are grant opportunity opportunities down the line for the foundation as well? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, the mayor mentioned uh, the visit with the uh, federal administrator of the SBA, and there are other grant opportunities, again, um, to try to provide, um, I think, really just extend access and availability for the resources that uh, we have and can provide that ordinarily wouldn't be available. So foundation uh, will be active in doing that, an independent five-member board that um, you know, really has as our mission to try to extend uh, beyond what we're doing commercially. And uh, this will be a big part of that, but there will um, be some other <coughs> projects that um, we'll be announcing in the future. What's the time frame on development of the downtown network? Yeah, the agreement um, sort of spans a couple of year time frame, and part of that is related to um, the sort of the middle piece of the project that involves Maine and Spanish streets where um, some conduit will be installed when the sidewalk, sidewalk project will be done down on Main Street. Um, so it'll sort of happen over three phases and uh, over a two-year period. And that, in, that includes the installation of the uh, additional fiber that we're putting in place for the city. Other questions? James, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Very good. Anyone else here before the council on any item that is, is on the agenda? Okay, Eric, if you'd take us through the consent agenda.
Number 16-105, an ordinance annexing unincorporated land into the city limits of the city of Cape Jordan, Missouri, located on the south side of LaSalle Avenue, east of Baldwin Drive, upon the request of Norwalk Inc., an ordinance annexing unincorporated land into the city limits of the city of Cape Jordan, Missouri, located on the south side of LaSalle Avenue, east of Baldwin Drive, upon the request of Norwalk Inc. Number 16-106, an ordinance making Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by zoning property on the south side of LaSalle Avenue, east of Baldwin Drive, located in the city and county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, as R1, single-family suburban residential district. An ordinance amending Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by zoning property on the south side of LaSalle Avenue, east of Baldwin Drive, located in the city and county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, as R1, single-family suburban residential district. Number 16-107, an ordinance extending the boundaries of Ward 4 to include property newly annexed into the city limits of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance extending the boundaries of Ward 4 to include property newly annexed into the city limits of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 16-110, an ordinance accepting a permanent water and sanitary sewer easement from Cape Retirement Community, Inc. for the Chateau Girardeau project in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance accepting a permanent water and sanitary sewer easement from Cape Retirement Community, Inc. for the Chateau Girardeau project in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 16-113, an ordinance uh, appropriating funds for operating expenditures, capital expenditures, debt service expenditures, and transfers for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2016 in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Ordinance appropriating funds for operating expenditures, capital expenditures, debt service expenditures, and transfers for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2016 in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 16-111, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with Marquette Tech District Foundation, Inc. for fiber optic cable service in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill number 16-112, an ordinance authorizing city manager to execute a license and indemnity agreement with Marquette Tech District Foundation, Inc. for the installation of communication conduit and fiber cable at various locations in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 16-116, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a general services agreement with Pure Technologies U.S. Inc. for pipeline condition assessment projects in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill number 16-117, a resolution authorizing application to the Edward Byrd Memorial Justice Grant JAG program, fiscal year 2016, local solicitation, and authorizing city manager to execute all necessary grant program documents. Number 16-118, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement for use of the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport facilities with High NS Air Service Inc. DBA Cape Air. Number 16-119, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with Nip Kelly Equipment Company Inc. for the 2016 sidewalk gas <coughs> program in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And Bill number 16-120, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a lease agreement with Aircraft Rotorcraft Maintenance Engineering Services LLC for office space at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. Council, you've heard the uh, reading of the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Move to adopt. By okay. Gunn, seconded by Fox. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? New ordinances, number 15, bill number 16-114, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a state block grant agreement with the Missouri Highway Transportation Commission to fund the promotion of Scheduled passenger air service at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. First read. So moved. So moved by Bowen. Second. And seconded by Fox. Any discussion? Vote in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Number 16, Bill number 16-115, an ordinance approving the record plat of Shadowwood Villas. First read. So moved. By Fox. <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bowen. <laughs> Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Council, we have four appointments uh, this evening. Number 17, appointment to the Airport Advisory Board. And the recommendation come back as we discussed at our uh, study session for Ryan DeRock and Mark Ceasing. If I could have a motion. So moved. So moved by Bogard. Second. Seconded by Bowen. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? An appointment to the Public Library Board of Directors. And as uh, we discussed, a re uh, reappointment of Dave Dively and Fran Austin. This would leave one position open uh, for future consideration. So moved. So moved by Guard. Second. Seconded by Gunn. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? An appointment to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, and that would be uh, the reappointment of um, of Patrick Ketting. He uh, I'm doubt with uh, with absences as he had changed uh, uh, job position. 
Uh, he's got that kind of worked out now and would like to be reappointed, and the uh, recommendation has come back to do that. So Patrick Ketting for uh, planning and zoning. So moved. So moved by Bowen. Second. Second it by uh, Gunn. Any discussion? In favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? And one appointment to the uh, tree board, and this is a uh, gal at uh, Department of Conservation, very knowledgeable, Jennifer Bankin. So moved. So moved by Second. Uh, and se seconded by Guard. Discussion? We've had four appointments, and there's two, four, five, six this evening, and I will comment again and thank all of uh, those who serve and those who apply for our many, many uh, uh, advisory boards and, uh, and commissions in our city um, do great work for us, and uh, we and all our citizens truly appreciate that. Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Is there any other business come before us? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn by then. Second. Seconded by guard. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Other people. I don't think it's tomorrow. I don't know. I saw something that I thought, dang, there's no more. I don't see them tomorrow. No. The one.